So just line that up. That's about as good as I'm going to get, I think. Might be losing a little bit, but we're not really painting much out on this right hand side. I'm going to leave that very soft out here. So it's mainly in this area that I'm going to be focusing the attention. So as I said, we're going to be working um, into the face, around the face, getting the details built up from what we did last time on the last uh, episode. So um, <clears throat> all I'm going to do is I'm using the similar process. So I've got two brushes on the go. So I'm going to have one that's got some water in it, so a slightly bigger brush. And I'm going to have one that's going to have the paint in it, which is uh, the one I'm going to apply the paint. Then I'm going to kind of push it around with the one with the water. I'll also be putting water onto the painting first to sort of um, buy me a bit of time to manipulate the colour. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to get into this eye and just tidy it up, get it in line with the other one, bring down the dark bit a little bit and then sort of work out in a similar process to how I did this eye, work out from this eye, start to get the cheek in, some of these browns down into the um, the nose and muzzle area <clears throat> so that this side of the face is a bit more equal to that side of the face. Okay, so color wise, I'm gonna use a bit of Payne's gray. So let's put it in this little one here. Uh, into that, I'm gonna put a little bit of the permanent rose just to um, slightly pink it up and a little bit of the, um, not, not brown, the, um, the, the burnt sienna, just to give it a little bit of color. Don't want it to be too dull. So taking some water, I'm going to bring that into the, <clears throat> this area and under the eye and start to drop in some of this colour. It's going to be too dark to start off with, but that's fine. We're just going to then take our damp brush and I'm going to just manipulate that colour. So just with a damp brush, not too wet, because obviously we don't want to um, introduce too much water into that space just to uh, get a little bit more uh, dark in there and you don't have to work left and right like I'm doing you can just do it in one hand it's just I find this a bit easier so just putting a bit more dark into this eye just to even it up otherwise one's going to be darker than the other Okay, and now I need a bit of brown now. So taking a bit of the um, burnt sienna. And I'm going to take a bit of that and I'm going to pop it just on the edge of that darker mark that I just put on just a teeny bit, not too much. And pull that out. Just pull that out from that shape just to give me a slightly warmer edge. I'm going to do the same little trick up here where I want it a bit warmer, just on the edge of the dark to start to bring some of those brownie colors um, out into the surrounding furs, the swap hands. Okay, it just warms up some of those sort of cooler darks that I put on last time. And you don't need much of this, you just need a little bit of that warmer color, just on the edge of those darks, to um, just to do that little bit of a job to um, <clears throat> warm them up. Okay, so now let's come down into the cheek. <clears throat> so I'm gonna lay some water down first of all, and try and lay the water sort of in the shape, not the exact shape, but sort of in the shape of the area that I'm going to be dropping the colour into. Oops, sorry, the board's wobbling a little bit, sorry about that. Um, so it kind of comes all the way down there. <clears throat> and then I'm going to dip into a little bit of cerulean blue. So that's the cooler blue. I sort of want a grey, really, a dirty grey. A bit of brown in there. Burnt umber. So it's a cool bluey gray color. And then I'm going to start to drop that into here and let that run down into that moisture that I've just put on. Taking my 
other brush, which is the damp wet brush. And I'm just gonna coax that out a little bit. Just continue this darker patch down. And it may feel a little bit dark. Perhaps you feel it's a little bit too dark at the moment. We can just manipulate it. Just looking for some of these um, bits of fur detail that I can work in at the same time. Oh, that's come a bit low, never mind. It should be a bit higher. I'm sure not all lions have their fur marks all in the same place, so I can live with that. Okay, and then I want a bit of colour now into those cooler colours. So I'm going to go into this sort of warm brown, the burnt sienna type colours. Drop a bit of that in here. While it's still wet. So we give time for the paint to sort of mix together. Oops. Just manipulate that a little bit, soften it off. And I need to coax this down, the muzzle. Bit more of the dirty grey. Just let the colours mix together. And this is coming right down the side of his muzzle. So let's pull that right the way down. And obviously when I use the damp brush, it's sort of like an eraser. So it takes off an amount of the paint. So I have to be a little bit careful that I don't take it all off. Otherwise there's no point putting any on. Um, just trying to keep the shape of the this area here which needs to be fairly light so I'm just going to do a little bit of lifting out in there with my lifting out brush so this area here needs to be quite light in the in the fur so I'm just agitating the paint with a stiffer brush take some tissue and then I'm just going to block some of that colour that was on there from last time off just to um oops sorry wrong brush just so that I can increase the tone I make it lighter in that area which will then read as though this part of the fur is getting slightly more light on it than the other areas of the fur that aren't <laughs> Which then helps to shape up the the muzzle and starts to give this idea of this 3D projecting forwards type effect. Okay, so now let's go back and pick up some more of this brownie colour. Need more hands. <clears throat> so I need to drop some more colour into here. Soften some of this off. So this needs to go very warm. This is very brown now. Oh, that might be very a bit too brown. Give that a go. Just put some colour down, then I'll just almost kind of rub it into the existing colours that I've already got on here in order to kind of blend. I suppose that would be the right term. It's blending the the um the color from one area to the next but making sure that the shape so really what i'm trying to do is as i'm putting these colors down is make sure that the shape stays correct um because that is the most important thing out of all of this is that the shape of what it is that you're painting um is the correct shape Otherwise, it won't start to describe a nose or a muzzle or anything. It will just be a, a piece of paint. OK, so now I need to bring a bit of tone into above the nose. Um, so let's put a bit of moisture again through this top plane. Remember, we've discussed planes before, i.e. surfaces that describe the lay of the, um, the structure that's being painted. So this surface we're trying to explain is going across like this. So this is the sky at the top. This is facing directly up or kind of at an angle to it. The sides of his face are more oblique. They're coming down kind of at an angle. 
so they're turned away from the light so that's why you get different light conditions not only is the fur probably darker but also you're getting different light conditions on it so that's why um it's not all just the same color so dipping back into some more cerulean actually probably a little bit more blue i might put a tiny bit of um the i think that's the indigo there and i'm going to run that into this above the nose area Um, and start to shape up this piece of this anatomy. Now I need to tip the board slightly away from me now because actually this piece should be going blending upwards or bleeding upwards, I should say. <clears throat> so I'm just going to let that piece of um, colour move into that moisture that I've just put on that way. Whilst I pick up a little bit more brown, just to tickle in down the side here. There's a few slightly darker marks um, in his fur. So I'm just gonna bring, these are sort of drawing marks that I can just start to bring in, um, sort of coming towards his eye. I think that might be a bit too far over. I need to move that in a bit. So let's take that off, it's in the wrong place. I'll move that over a touch. <clears throat> so there's his eye, so I need to come in a bit more there. Otherwise it's gonna make his muzzle too narrow. So we're coming out from the eye and we're sort of coming around and sort of down. Now I don't wanna join that right up to the nose there because it will it will break the illusion of it being fur. So I want to just have it as a soft piece of colour. So just taking some water, just going to soften all that off. Into those colours that are already there. Might even do a little bit of lifting out using the belly of the brush. Just in here. Okay, <clears throat> so now a little bit more dark across the ridge of the nose. So I'm going to darken this up a touch. Again with my dirty grey colours. Just drop some of that in almost as a very, very pale, a very pale wash. Almost just glazing glazing that colour on so that the it could just knock down the white of the paper and make it slightly darker, not too dark, just slightly darker. A little bit more, oh, that might be a bit too much, a little bit more tone coming down this side. <clears throat> Okay, then I need to dip into some of my warmer browns. A bit more moisture. Get my brushes mixed up. So now in here on the on the muzzle, it comes a little bit warmer. So more brown, more of the warmy brown. I'm gonna just take some of that burnt sienna color, burnt matter. Uh, the brown matter, whatever you want to call it. And just drop some of this in. Just bring that up the nose a little bit. So it's kind of like a little triangle, really. It's a tiny little triangle shape. And it can be very helpful sometimes if you can kind of name the shape that you're trying to paint. It just makes it a bit easier for your eye to see it. Okay, so I now need to drop some warmer colors into this left-hand side of the muzzle. So let's tilt that a bit flatter again. So now coming down this side of the muzzle, we need some more browns. So let's drop a bit of moisture in there. Pick up some browns. 
start to introduce those. I'll try not to lose all of my nice white whiskers that I've taken the masking fluid off. I'm just going to sort of paint some of the negative shapes between them. And then just soften all, soften all these edges off that the brush leaves behind, just with some moisture. So just tickle that away. Perhaps a little bit there as well, just to stop that from being too sharp. Take some cerulean. Actually, I'm going to clean off one of these troughs so that I can get some cleaner blue colour going. There we go. So let's take some of that cerulean blue. I'm just going to use this as cerulean in its own right now. And uh, start to work up <clears throat> the front of the muzzle. So coming under the nose, underneath the nose, into the whiter hairs. I've got a lot more water in that cerulean. It's very, very pale. Not that much pigment in there. That's a bit too much. There we go, a little bit lighter. So I want it as a very, very pale glaze, not too strong, um, in order to just knock these whites down a tiny bit. Um, we'll do the same on this side. Because obviously if you leave it completely white, it won't read as though it's um, kind of turning back in towards itself where the nose is which is kind of important. So coming down, down the face here, a little bit more blue. So now on these edges where it's actually turning right into the dark, I'm just gonna go slightly darker with my dark mix that I had earlier. I'll just pop a bit of that on the edge of those blues that I've just put on. Gone a bit far, just knock that back. So just right on the edge of the dark, just a little bit of those warmer, sorry, not warmer, but slightly darker tones. Then the nose itself needs to come a bit darker. So again, just take some of those darker tones that I had before, and I'm just gonna, do this on dry paper first, so that I can keep the shape. So you sort of got this triangle. It might bleed a little bit into that color that I've just put on. Just take that right the way down. And then it lightens as it kind of comes up into another triangle. So you sort of got this triangle on top of a triangle. Or dark. And this comes all the way up. And I think there's probably a, a nostril in there somewhere, but I'm not really going to worry about that. Can't really tell where it is. And then again on this side, comes all the way up. So leaving this slightly lighter tone on the top, which is the top plane of the nose. So if I was to paint that in, then it would become just one big, one big solid shape. And I want it to be a little bit, uh, a little bit more, have a bit more shape to it than that. So a bit more indigo and the burnt sienna. So making up a bit more of that dark color. A little bit of cerulean in there as well. Okay, so I'm going to use this now just to come down into the mouth area. So 
just tickle some of this dark right into that darker passage at the bottom of the mouth. Just a bit more water. <clears throat> <clears throat> Just drop a bit more of that in there. <coughs> the odd tiny little bit pulling out to the side there. Not too much. May even have a little bit more of this dark up in the eye area. Just to shake this eye up a bit more. I'm just painting into the existing shape that I've already got here, just to give it a bit more strength. Just to soften the edge off. Just by dabbing it with a, just dabbing the, um, the edge of the shape with a damp brush. Just so it's really nice and soft. Okay. And do a little bit of that darkening on this eye as well. Because obviously if these are quite nice and dark, it'll really pull the attention into the, um, the actual eye. It's a bit darker there. Just making sure I've got a clean brush. I'm not using a dirty brush. Just softening off around those shapes. Okay, now I think the center of the eyes need a bit more tone. So I'm gonna take a bit of moisture again, a bit of water, and just wet in and around that highlight. So where I want the center of the, the pupil to come. Soften off this edge a bit more. And then I'm going to take my dark colour, put a bit of blue in there actually, a bit more cerulean. So I don't know if this is a very old line, but it looks a bit like he's got a cataract or something. <laughs> a very grey centre of the new line. So I might mine a bit stronger, I think. Just dropping that colour into that moisture. And then I'm just going to take my damp brush and just feather the edge just to control the shape so that the shape doesn't get too unruly. A bit more tone around that highlight. Just to really give that eye a bit more of a pop. Just pulling the colour out with a damp brush like so. And I'll do the same on the other eye. So really you don't want this bit to be too dark. It, it needs to be dark enough, but not so dark that it overpowers everything else. Um, so I'm just going to wet the center of this eye. Like so. Take a bit of that color again. So I've already got some left in the brush. Just going to drop that into and around that highlight and just tickle that again around the edges just to sort of soften it off. Get it to merge into those colors already that are there. Okay, I'm just going to drop that down just to see if he's cross eyed. Don't want a cross-eyed line. That'll be all right. So now, need to get into his chinny chin chin. So let's put some moisture again back on here. Just clean water, or cleanish water, I should say. Slop a bit of that on. Back to the cerulean blue. And just straight on with the cerulean blue. Just 
let that merge down. Perhaps a tiny bit of brown in there, just up near the mouth. <clears throat> So now I'm just going to do a little bit of lifting out to get some light back. So just using my damp brush, I can just wipe some of that paint back off just to um, control the shape again. Need a bit more blue out on the left here. A little bit more blue there. Oops. Okay, tiny bit of the I think that's the Payne's grey, yep. Yeah. Take a piece of that. Again, a bit of water in it. So not too dark. And I'm gonna bring a bit of that Payne's grey as well into these, into his fur, down on his chin. Probably bring a bit of that into the muzzle as well. Okay, let's just tidy some of this up. A bit of light there, a bit more light. Okay, I'm gonna take some more of that paint spray because I think I need a bit more of that. I'm gonna bring a bit of that around the nose in places. So I'm just gonna wipe some of that back so it's gonna bleed too far there. Bit of gray under the nose here. Let's have some more gray coming in and around the eye. Some of the grey down here, where we get that transition from being sort of a flatter surface to a more angled surface. Just a bit more of that on this side. A bit of moisture. <clears throat> Temper the edges. Okay, so I'm going to leave the face alone for the moment. I might come back to it, but I'm going to get back in. I'm going to start playing with the hair a little bit now. So, up here on the hairline, because the hairline is obviously fairly important where the hair meets the, the face, I'm going to bring some, just some water. Kind of putting it down in the sort of the shape, a little bit larger than the shape that I expect to bring the colour into. Some brown into those Payne's grey colours. <clears throat> and then we've got this sort of mohawk area over here. So I'm going to bring this darker brown coming down, down from this top section. Now where I want to keep this as a lighter piece of hair, all I'm going to do is just chop a little bit of negative space painting just chop in there to give the suggestion that we've got some almost like if it was grasses but then this then becomes lighter and then the bit behind it obviously is darker so cerulean blue bring a bit of that in there and then it starts to turn the corner and then it just bleeds away into some very light colors so what I'll do first of all is I'll wash that out. So I'll let that run away. A bit more of these ochre colours in there, uh, browner colours in there. And then we'll just let that with clean, cleanish water come down the side of his face. 
and then the beard, sorry, the, the hair start to change direction then. So now I've got a very straight line there. So we want to just pay attention to that. So just with my damp brush, just going to lift that out. Just to soften that right off. Kind of working it back in and up to those existing colours. So all I'm doing is just tickling the edge with a damp brush just to uh, finesse it. Go slightly darker there. So we've got, uh, let's let that dry for a second. I'm going to spray that out. Just spray these, some of those edges to soften them off. Get some clean tissue. Block that off. Just want to make sure that the shape up here stays fairly correct. So I'm just going to blot a bit of that off as well. Okay. Again, working in that similar fashion as I was doing before. So I'm going to put the, uh, the water down first. So I've got a nice wet area to sort of paint into. So let's bring that right the way into the whiskers. Now, obviously I'm not going to paint around every whisker. I probably, probably should have if I'd have thought about it, left the masking fluid on, but never mind. So coming out, I want to leave this nice glow to the edge here. So I'm not going to bring the paint too far out. And then I'll just wash it away as it kind of comes down there. So into the brown, so the burnt umber, and again with the some yellow in it, the burnt umber and the uh, the yellow, a little bit of water, and then I'm just going to start to run that into that moisture out of the slightly drier area. So I'm just going to give the indication that maybe there are a few slightly darker hairs, perhaps up here. Not too many, just the odd, the odd bit. Don't want to get carried away. Uh, continue that dark down. I'm going to put a bit of the um, cerulean in there just to temper it. Don't want it to be completely, completely brown. So I'll just run a bit of this blue into it. And again, here we've got a, a nice edge that I can just pull back out of into the dry paper to uh, get that colour to work into the existing colours. Okay, and then get that to continue to meander down, down the, down the fur, a bit more of the brown, I think as I come down to this bottom area. A little bit darker. Just the odd bit into the whiskers there. Again, if I'd have left the masking fluid on, it probably would have been easier to paint that, but live and learn. So just trying to keep that slightly lighter area into there. Continue down. And then I'm going to wash out, actually let's use the spray bottle. So this edge now, just get that nice and soft. A 
let that sort of run down into the moisture. Okay, a bit more brown. And a little bit of the indigo in there, not too much, just a little bit, Oops, a tiny bit of the madder as well. Burnt sienna. So, because obviously I want it a bit darker down here, really to get the, the light colors to show up quite nicely. And it'll help the face to protrude more. Let's run that all the way down. Okay, bring that up into the, I might just get my brush that's got a bit more of a point on it. So I'm gonna use this dagger brush so that I can kind of wiggle this color into the, uh, the hairs a little bit. So it's got a really fine point. And then I can give myself a nice jaggedy edge to suggest hairs and all that good stuff. Again, just going to spray that out. Hairs here and there. Perhaps bring some up from the bottom. To sort of cut back into the, the you know, the lighter colors within the mane. And then on this side as well, we can do a little bit of that. So this is the indigo and the burnt sienna together. It's giving me a nice sort of warm dark brown. Just cutting in to that um, main area. which helps to sort of shape up, shape up the colors, uh, this, this larger main sort of area. Let's have a few of those hairs up the top here. And then I need to pick his ear out. So let's try and find where his ear was, which I think was in here somewhere. So we've got a sort of an ear there. And then I'm gonna brush out some darks to suggest the, um, so sort of onto the dry paper. Just giving the suggestion of hairs going away into the distance there. Too much. The odd squiggle here and there. Okay, let's stop fiddling with that now. So, next thing then is I want to try and give the suggestion of some lighter hair mane, uh, lighter colors within the, in and around the eyes, to get the eyes to pop a bit more. So I'm just gonna take some white and I may glaze over this white, um, but we'll see how we go. So this is really just to tickle some color in around the eyes, just to intensify them a little bit more and, and uh, 
help them to stand out. Should really be cream, but I don't have a cream color, so I'm going to use white. And then, as I said, I may glaze back into it perhaps, or I might just leave it. I don't know, maybe I like it. I may have a few hairs. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as the reference. Uh, I'm going to bring a bit of light down into the main down here. So a bit of this white gouache just on the edge of the main there. Let's get a little bit on the edge of the eye. Some on the nose, or around the edge of the nose, I should say. Uh, we can use this just to suggest a few more whiskers. Perhaps some hairs in his chinny chin chin. Oops, that's gone a bit big, never mind. Okay, now I'm gonna go and get some, uh, what have I done with the lid? Yellow ochre. So this is just a, a brownie, sort of a yellowy brown. And again, with this sort of dagger brush, I'm just gonna use this to Again, pick out some shapes in the main. Suggest some hairs or trying to create the illusion of hairs really without painting every hair is really what I want. Um, because obviously it's very laborious to try and paint every single hair. It's much more fun just to try and create the illusion. And then purposely trying to keep the brush fairly loose in my hands so that I'm not, so that I try not to get too controlled with the mark making, just letting the paint come off the brush in a very fluid, or as fluidly as possible. So a few more marks. Let's bring a few down into this area. A little bit out on the right here. over the year. Okay. A couple of little marks just in the face, just for some of these longer hairs around the eye. Perhaps you've got some like eyelashes or just a suggestion of some longer hairs. Seem to have a little bit of a, some whiskers and bits of color here and there. Just dry the brush off a bit. And then want a bit of dry brushing. Just around here. Just drag a bit of color on sort of scumble the colour onto the onto the paper. A 
Look a little bit up into his face there. A bit on the edge. Just rub a bit of that into the muzzle. <clears throat> okay, and as I said, I probably want to glaze over a little bit of that white around his eyes. A bit too light now. I'll take a bit of the cerulean. Again, fairly light. I don't want it too, so a bit of moisture in it. I'm just going to tickle some of that over the top of those whites just to knock them down just a little bit. Tiny bit more. Okay, that was just a tiny bit more there. So I'm just going to step back and just see what else needs doing. Greeny blue colour into the eyes. Just to give the eyes a bit more interest. So I'm going to take some of this emerald green. I know it's not... Um, exactly the same colour and put a bit of cerulean in it. It's kind of a emerald kind of colour. A bit more water. Let's try this. Might be a bit too blue. So let's put a bit of water down. Not too much, just a tiny bit at the top of the eye. I'm going to try and keep the bottom of the eye fairly light still. And just bring a tiny bit of this green colour to make the eyes pop a bit more. And also to slightly darken the, um, the top section of the eye because I want to sort of say that it's um, domed over. And if it's all the same value from top to bottom, it won't do that. So a bit in that eye, and then we'll have the same in this one. Bit of that green. Work that in. May even just work in a bit of um, I think I need a little bit of pink as well. It's obviously green and a bit of red. All oh, work quite nicely together. So a tiny bit of red. Not much, just a tiny little bit, just right on the edge here before it meets the black of the, or not black, but the very, very dark outer edge of the eye. It's possibly not bright enough, but that'll be okay. Tiny little bit on the inside. 
then work that in. So these are just quite incremental changes now, not, not big changes at all. So a little bit of that on this eye. Right on the edge before it meets the almost the black area. So it's kind of like a half tone color right in the um, the transition between the the very very dark to the very very light, just to give the eyes a bit more life. Um, to them. Perhaps also I could try um, darker blue. Let's try a little bit of darker blue. So maybe like a cobalt, just a teeny bit of cobalt blue. Again, just on the very, very edge. And I'm talking about a tiny little piece of it, not too much. And you probably wouldn't even, you probably won't even be able to see it on the camera. Um, it's one of those things that will probably only show up in life. Let me see if you were to see it. Just soften those off. Perhaps a little bit of that blue just in this area where the muzzle is. I might couple that with a bit of the brown. So it's very dry now, this brushwork, not putting much moisture with it. Just to pick out some of these stronger darks. Tiny bit of dry brush in the mouth. I think I could have a little bit of that brown matter has a few dry brush marks in the main. Again, to create the illusion of hairs and such like. more of the brown, this brown matter up here. Again, applying it very dry with a brush, so not too much water in it. I mean, you could do it neat from the tube if you wanted to. That would probably be just as good. Really what you're after is some of this dry brushing sort of dragging across the surface to um, give you a nice broken paint effect. A bit more dark out here. Few more marks, and then I think we're probably probably done. Very easy to kind of overdo this and fiddle. Um, it's probably better to leave it slightly less finished. Um, Leave a bit to the imagination. So I think that will do.